So, how you doing folks? And welcome to Recovery Now. I'm your host, June, and I got my guest here, Sean. Thanks for having me, June. How you doing, Sean? I'm doing well, doing well. Thanks for inviting me down here. Welcome to Recovery Now. Um, Sean has an interesting story to tell. Um, uh, He's one of the guys that uh, takes meetings to recovery places. Um, for people that can't get out to go to meetings because they're in rehabs. So, Sean, tell us about how long you've been clean, by the way. Uh, it's coming up on five years, actually, next week, okay. December uh, 7th. will be five so, years. Tell, tell me, what was it like before you got clean? Um, what, what, what kind of life you led? What kind <laughs> of stuff you did? All right, see that laugh? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a heck of a story. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it's it, my, uh, so I'm, I'm 39 now. Okay. And, uh, Happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. It's <laughs> actually coming up in a little bit, but that's, that's I started in recovery pretty young. Right. Um, uh, I, I come from a family with, you know, addiction and also some recovery. Right. So uh, my parents at a very early age, um, they spotted some signs in me at about 17, 18 years old, and uh, I was asked, you know, to, co- to, to join, you know, one mm-hmm. of my family members at a meeting, right. and I, I did that. And so I've been around recovery for a long time, um, but I've, you know, I, I, at a very young age, I felt comfortable going to meetings and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. um, I, uh, I didn't really, I didn't really start trying to turn my life around for real until 2011, when when my son was born. Okay. And uh, so I was in 2011. I got clean and and had a, a good stretch of about four years or so, and then uh, I relapsed and and got sober again in, in 2017. What what um okay, uh, that's a good that's interesting that you say that. And I'm going to ask you a question here because mm-hmm. um, a lot of people relapse. Um, Explain what what relapse really is in, in your own words, okay. what it means to you, and uh, what led you to relapse, it's, you know, so no, that people, you know, that are watching know that this is possible. Even if this could happen to you, it doesn't matter how long you've been clean. You can yeah. be clean 20, 30 years, and if you don't watch yourself, this could happen to you. Yeah, no, I, I, I think know? that's probably the best question to ask. It's mm-hmm. certainly the question I needed to ask myself, mm-hmm. you know, trying to trying to clean myself up again and, and get back into recovery is, you know, where did things get off track? Right. I mean, I, I don't think there's any way to get better unless you, you take a look at what went wrong. Um, so, I mean, for me personally, I, I think that um, my relapses always started in, in thinking and behaviors. Right. Um, I don't think I just decided after you know a, a good chunk of time living a better life to uh to just throw it away just for mm-hmm. fun i don't think i made a decision i think it was like other things in my life became more important right. than taking care of my like self-care right. you know that that regimen that works for me or that was working for me and slowly but surely you know i, I went back to school you know i was doing good things mm-hmm. in my life but those things all started to kind of take over, and I really lost sight of the, you know, like what it takes to, to, to do self care. Yeah, 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 in general. And, and to me, it's, it's, you know, mental health and, and substance use, you know, yeah, they're they go hand, hand in hand. 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 Yep. And for me, it was my mental health that, like, I look right. back on it, and my mental health started to struggle first. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I was, I've always struggled with anxiety, and, and that came back first, and I was really struggling with feeling like I fit in at places. You know, I was going to my, I was, mm-hmm. I was in my master's program at school and I felt like because I was one of the older students, I feel awkward and I, that stuff started to build. You know what? No, that's a good thing you say that because uh, when, when, when I was getting high, uh, mostly uh, I started uh, uh, just like, uh, um, what do you call it? When 
I get I, I, I get this thing that where I want to be alone all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be around people. I felt I felt weird when my high was going down and yeah. you know, <laughs> and uh, I always felt like I didn't belong. Everything that you said, you know, it's it, and I and I think that that is one of the things that happens to people before they relapse when they start feeling this feeling. I never relapse, so I'm not. Sh I'm, but I hear people talk. And I and it's it starts with 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 this right here. Yeah, one hundred percent. You feel know, you feel strange around people. Mm -hmm. You you feel like you you know like everybody's watching you. Yeah. You know, and when you're not when your high starts to go down, you you don't even feel like yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. mean that's how I felt all the time. Yeah. And so when I was high, I felt like yeah, I belong. You know, I didn't care what anybody. You know. Yeah. So. Go ahead. Go I think, no, I think you're, I mean, there's, there's two words that are similar that I relate together when I think about addiction and relapse and all that kind of stuff. I think about um, disconnection mm -hmm. and I think about isolation. Yeah, And they're, they're that's the that's same it. thing. And, and yeah. when I, that's, I think, what starts to happen is I start to live life back in my own head again. Mm -hmm. You know, in those, that probably year leading up to, you know, my, my, when I actually started abusing substances again. Um, I, I, I started to live life all up here. Well, it, it, in other words, you, you relapse up here before you relapse physically. Absolutely. And I, I, I mean, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't ever want to speak for anybody else, but I've heard, I've been around recovery now, and I've been around mm -hmm. the profession of, of helping people for a long time, and I have never heard anybody say otherwise. Like, mm -hmm. I've just, I've talked yeah. to enough people that almost everyone I've ever spoken to says, you know, my mindset changed yeah. first. Yeah. I realized, you know, and, and you don't realize it when it's happening, which is, I think, what makes it so... Tr I didn't. Yeah. I, I, again, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I think, you know, I look back on it and I try to say, like, what could I have done different? And it was so insidious. It was so under the surface. Right. And then the next thing you know, boom, I'm convincing a doctor yeah. I need to be on pills that I know are probably dangerous mm -hmm. for me. But, you know, I'm so anxious and I'm so this and I'm so that. And that's kind of how it all took off. It was... Uh, and it led to... You know, a, a two-year stretch that was really, really rough for me. Yeah. You know, without a doubt. So you, you know, um, I've been told a lot. You know, like in everything, it's like what you just said. You know, um, about the relapse, and one of the things that I notice about people that relapse is they get comfortable. Mm -hmm. As the longer they clean, they get comfortable, and, and the first thing they say, "I got this. I got this. I'm okay." And what people don't, what they don't realize is that if you're an alcoholic or addict or alcoholic addict like me, that's for life. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't cure doesn't come in a bottle. There's no pills to take. You know. Yeah. The, um, this is these places. The rehabs is your medicine. The book of recovery is your pills. You know, those are your those are your tools to stay clean and sober. And to stay clean and sober is is up to you, you know. Yeah, uh -huh. doesn't matter what you're taught, what they teach you. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you get um, there's the word that they use for that. When you get relaxed because you've been clean for a while, and then you you take your mind off your recovery, and and and, and some people even say, oh, I could have a beer, or I could have one shot. It's not gonna hurt. I've been clean this long. You know, some people even go that way. And from what I understand and what, from what I see, boom, there you go. You, you relapse. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would, um, I agree with you 100%. And I think the word that you're looking for is, is, is complacent. Yeah, complacent. And, and to yeah. me. <clears throat> That's the word. Excuse me. Um, and to me, I, you know, those words I think we use interchangeably a lot. You know, I got comfortable in my recovery. I got complacent in my recovery. And to me, um, I prefer the word complacent because when I think about mm -hmm. the lead up to the relapse, I was anything but comfortable. Mm -hmm. I was uncomfortable. Yeah. And to me, there's a, there's a person that I really like. He's a, he's a researcher and he's, he's written some books on addiction. And I'm not going to try to exactly quote how he defines mm -hmm. addiction, but he, he says it's chronic emotional discomfort, you know, in which we seek a means to soothe, mm -hmm. 
but whatever means we find to soothe also continues to create consequences in our life. Mm. And so to me, I think of like, if I'm at a place where I'm really uncomfortable mm -hmm. in my own skin all the time, I'm probably headed for a bad spot. Right. Like, I, I, I mean, life is uncomfortable. You know, we all have our uh -huh. moments. But if I'm uncomfortable all the time, I have to start paying attention to what's going See, on. I'm afraid of relapse. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's, I, I really, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm terrified of relapse um, because I, 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 I would, if we had the time, I would tell you a story, why, you know. I mean, I seen a guy. Well, this guy, he was clean for 27 years, and he relapsed, and. Uh, he could never get his life back on yeah. track, and uh, he put his head on a, he put himself on a train track, mm -hmm. and uh, this is in Florida, Oof. and a train ran him over. Gosh! And uh, I had heard him speak on his 26th um, anniversary. Wow! And he he was and I was only clean for one year when I heard him, and I was like, wow! And then when I was on my sixth year, I was spoken, and, and he came in, and uh, he's been clean for seven days. Mm -hmm. And he told the story how it happened, and anyway, but the ending was that he couldn't get his life back. He lost everything, his business, his wife, everything, and he could not get back in that train. Mm -hmm. So he, he laid on the train track, and, and I'm afraid, I'm afraid of relapse. Um, I'm clean, I've been clean 11 years, August 29th is my clean day. Um, and I look forward, I would like to, when I die, to die clean and sober. Um, I'm afraid of relapse because I'm, I'm afraid that if I go back out there, I'm mm -hmm. not going to survive. Uh, I'm not going to survive. And I love the way my life has gotten over the years. Mm -hmm. Every year it gets better and better and better. And I, like, look, I like doing this, what we're doing right yeah, now. Yeah. If I was using, I could not help other people out. I cannot send a message. Um, God and the program of recovery are my tools to stay clean and sober. Mm -hmm. um, and this is why this show is here. Yeah. For people to see how, what it is to be clean and that it is possible and that it is possible to have a beautiful life, the life that you want mm -hmm. if you stay clean and sober. So in saying that, I want to ask you, what made you get clean to begin with? Uh, it, was, it was having a, a child. It was my son, okay. without a doubt. I would like to say that I did it all for myself, but I think um, it was uh, you know, having a child. And then even after I, I relapsed when he was about, you know, I was clean for the beginning of his life, you know, the first uh, five years or so. And then I had about a, almost a two year relapse. And, and, and I would say he was also a huge reason why I, I continued to try. Even right. in those two years I was out, I mean, I, I went to treatment a couple of times. It wasn't like I just went out and said, I'm never so, going to do this again. So you were clean for five years? Uh, ju uh, yeah, just about. And then when you relapsed, you were out for two? Yeah. How long you been clean now? Five years. So, wow, you could have had 10 years on your 10 or 12. Yeah, yeah. Although, you know, right. it's, it's. But, but. It, yeah, go I, ahead. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're here. Mm -hmm. And what I want you to tell the clients is what, what's your life like now um, since you've been clean, you know? You know, it's it's incredible. You you said two things that stuck with me when you were sharing. And, and it, it reminds me about like what it really takes to to continue to stay clean it, in my in my view. Mm -hmm. It takes two things more than anything else. It takes gratitude and it takes service. Yeah, it yeah. takes, you know, in, in service. You know, I work in, in the industry now, like I, I almost feel weird calling it an industry, but I am a, I'm a, I'm a therapist. And so I work with people, but I think it's about doing that service mm. that is is uh, altruistic that right. they talk about in, in recovery programs that, you know, there's there's no pay. There's no. I think, so I yeah. think service. Yeah. And then also kind of keeping that attitude, like you said, I'm, I'm grateful to be here. I, I know that what my life could look like if I wasn't here. I know mm. what my life could look like. And, you know, I, that, that guy you were talking about who, you know, put his, his body on the line and, and made that ultimate sacrifice, um, I can relate to that. Everything mm -hmm. that I built, everything that was given to me, right. everything that I was, you know, came into my life in those, you know, four and a half first years right. I was in recovery, 
yeah. was slowly picked away from my life, like 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 picking away pieces from a from the Thanksgiving mm -hmm. turkey yeah. until there was nothing left. Yeah, nothing left. And and when I went to when that's, I went to treatment in 2017, that's a good way to. Uh, I was homeless, jobless, you name it. I like the way you describe that uh, uh, the turkey thing. Uh, yeah, that's a good way to. Uh, to describe uh, relapse, you know, you gave e everything that you gain when you relapse goes away mm -hmm. slowly, just like you just. That is good. That is good. I gotta remember that. I gotta remember it. You I know? might use it again. So, sometime. so <laughs> I you never use, thought of it. Since you use turkey, <laughs> what we gotta remember also is, um, and he, you already said it. We're very grateful to be clean and sober. Mm. To be clean and sober is a beautiful thing. Um, and unless you, you experience it, you won't know. Because, uh, and, and the thing is that the longer you're clean, as time goes by, when you hit a year, two years, and, and as time goes by, one day you look back, and then you're going to realize how well, how beautiful your life progressed, the stuff you accomplished. Now look at Sean here. Sean, Sean before, before you first, before you first got clean, how long were you out there? How many years? Oh, God. I mean, I probably had a little bit of time where I was clean in my teens when I first went. But then yeah. probably from 21 until 28, so, I, was, so, I was, you know, okay, from the so, time I first started using until I was 28, I didn't have any real recovery so time. So you used maybe, what, eight, nine, ten years? Yeah, and then least. you got clean for five years. Mm -hmm. Then you relapsed for two. And now you've been clean five years. Now look at that road. But yet he keeps trying and trying. And, and now this time around, you've been clean five years and you, you're, you're, a ther you're, you're a therapist. I am. I am, yeah. He works, he works for recovery. He works for recovery. He's giving it back big time, you know. Now, where, where do you, where, where do you, tell us where you work at and tell us what do you do there for the alcoholic addict? How, what do you do there to help him? if they were to come to your facility. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think probably the, the I, have, I have two jobs. Um, the one that's most prevalent to what we're doing here mm -hmm. is um, I, I work, uh, I have a small private practice counseling okay. uh, a, uh, business with, with my father. It's a family-run business. My oh, father is also cool. uh, a, a, an LADC, so a licensed alcohol and drug counselor. Right. Um, and that's up on, um, it's on Wolcott Street in Waterbury. Okay. Uh, it's actually technically in Wolcott, uh, and I'm sorry, it's on Meriden Road. We used to be on it's Wolcott It's okay. It's still, it's still here. But yeah, still here. Um, we're on Meriden Road, no. just just outside of Waterbury and Wolcott, and we do we offer individual group therapy. Um, you know, we do a lot of intervention work. Um, we do, you know, we we have resources for people who are looking mm -hmm. to do more uh, psychiatric counseling and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's it's you know an average you know your typical kind of uh, okay. counseling center, but that's what I do, you know, um, in, in the evenings, full time, I, um, I actually work, so I work for a large manufacturer and it's a, it's a union based employer. And I, as a union member, I run our locals employee assistance program. Right. So what that means is I'm kind of like the first line of defense. That to me is almost more like being a peer helper. You know, mm -hmm. when somebody that I work with yeah. all of a sudden is struggling, their attendance is bad. It could be, you know, I mean, we're here talking about substance use. So they all come the in sound like alcohol, whatever. You're looking for all the signs. They call yeah. me and it's, and, and it's yeah. my job to, you know, go have a conversation with that person. But it's more than that, obviously. It's more than just substance use. People are having all kinds of issues these days. You know, it's, it's a really tough time for people, mental health and substance yeah. abuse wise. So... I, I try to live a life of, of service in general, you know, both in my yeah, professional it, and in and my personal life. And that's beautiful, man. I mean, that's that's the way I think, you know, some people call this wishful thinking, but um, I, I also uh, wish that other people would just join in and help, period. Mm. It, it, I mean, help with other stuff, not just, not just our situation. Um, but there's other stuff in the world that people starving, homeless, all that kind of stuff, you know. I wish people would just say, you know what, I want to help. I, I want to help because it's the right thing to do, you mm -hmm. know. And that's what's happening here with us. Um, 
we, we're here to help others that have the same problem that we have. Yeah. And w it's our way of giving back, you know. Um, like some of us are doing stuff on the side to help others, you mm -hmm. know, with the, with the drugs and alcohol, and we don't ask for nothing. Like what no. you do every Tuesday. Yes, yeah. That's, uh, I mean, that's the most important part of my week. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And, and, and I try to tell the guys that when I'm there. Um, I, I, what is it? That so I, I go into the Wellmore Therapeutic Shelter uh, okay. on Griggs Street in Waterbury, and I bring a, a meeting in there on Tuesday nights. Um, and it's just, it's not based in any particular, um, you know, 12-step uh, program. It right. is a 12, it's just to, for people that have an experience yeah. and understanding of what the 12-step process is. Um, and, uh, it's just basically more of like an educational thing. Right. Um, and it's really just an opportunity for me to kind of give back to people. And, and it's something mm -hmm. that I, 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 I personally, I don't know, I, I, I couldn't, I could, it's the anchor of, of my mm -hmm. week, you know, is, is having yeah. an opportunity to go back and, and go to a place where I lived, mm -hmm. you know, five years ago yeah. when I was at the complete bottom of my life. That's right. What, what he's saying is, and repeat it again for those who don't know, where were you living five years ago? In my vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> and after that? Uh, in, in, in a treatment center and then in the shelter. And where do you go for those Tuesday meetings that you give now? The same shelter. See that? He goes back to Wellmore. He, was, he lived in Wellmore. Uh, that's where he got his recovery. And now he goes back there to take meetings to all the clients that are there. Now, that's what I call giving back, you know. Um, and when he tells us, hey, look, I lived here. I, I was here. You know what? You, how, you know how beautiful it is? If I'm in recovery and the guy that's giving me a meeting wound up telling me that he was, that he was in the same shelter, I mean, that I am the same rehab that I am. And now he's clean and he's doing it. He's, he, he's helping people for a living. Um, and his job, they, they need alcohol treatment and, and drugs. I would be, I would be wanting to stay clean because I want that life. I want that good life. If he has it, it works for them. Yeah, yeah. And, and it only works for you if you truly, 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 truly want to stay clean and sober, right? I would agree with that. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that there's nobody, nobody can do it for you, you know, but you. But you. And. Uh, I've, I've heard, you know, a lot of people say, you know, you can't do it for anybody else, you know, and, and I, I would say that, you know, I don't, I think whatever gets you, mm -hmm. you know, in the door of trying yeah. to turn your life around is acceptable. But I think in the long run, most people end up, you know, finding a way to, to, you know, make it about right. themselves. I'm, I'm not doing this for anybody else. This is something, you know, I don't, I don't stay, uh, I don't, I don't continue the path of recovery anymore yeah. for my son. It's it, I, being a father to him and being pre all the all the gifts that I have right. because of it are very important. But uh, I don't do it for him. Yeah. I do it because it's what makes it's what gives me joy. Mm -hmm. You know, give it, it gives me joy to be around and, people and, and to be connected. And you know what's beautiful about that is that your son is growing up seeing just you, mm -hmm. and you're the role model. You're setting a good sample for him. He's not seeing you out there getting drunk and doing that, because that's what he'll learn. Yeah. If, if daddy does if it, he why saw can't me at all. Yeah. <laughs> if daddy does it, why can't I? Yeah. But this is this is what I also tell the guys that have kids at the place, man. You know, you 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 don't want your kid to grow up doing, you know, doing Yeah. And oh no, no. So why are you doing it? Don't you think they're gonna notice? Yeah. You know? Um me, my son, I, my son wasn't with me since he was 16, so I wasn't in his life. But I'm glad that the guy that took my place did a good job because my son, we have a relationship now, and he never, he never drinks, he don't do drugs, he don't smoke. Um, he works. He's a manager at a produce place in Colorado, a big produce store. Okay. Um, and uh, he has his own home, two cars, a trailer home, a boat. Yeah. He's doing better than I am. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. like, and I'm so <laughs> proud of him. I'm like, wow. And, and, and I said, that's, that's because his, his stepdad 
doesn't drink, doesn't do any of that stuff, you know? So I'm glad that uh, somebody was there to show him that, mm -hmm. what you're showing your For son, sure. you know? Yeah, showing people you know? how to, you know, live a healthy life and, yeah. and just be an example. You know, I, I, one thing that I, I'm, I wanna make sure that I say and, and that is if sometimes when I, you know, go there on Tuesday nights and mm -hmm. I, I talk to the guys, you know, the gifts in my life are not the material things that I have. Right. It's, it's not even always, and, and I don't mean to make this sound bad, like it's not even always about the relationships, the people in my life, whether it be my son who I love so much or my wife or any of that. It's really about, I feel useful today. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I, have, I have a purpose. You got a purpose, I have something. Yeah, that's... Like I have a gift, like the, the, all the bad times that I went through, have given me yeah. the opportunity to be uniquely uniquely useful right. to certain people. And I know that now. That's the payback to me. Yeah. It is. It is. That's the payback that uh, I feel I feel useful. Um, I feel great inside. Yeah. Because today I don't have to worry about the stuff that I used to worry about people coming at me because I did, you know. Today I live a good life. I help people just like you do. So I feel good about that, you know. Um, when when I when I when I see somebody smile because I did something nice for them, you know, as far as the the pl you know the place where you go, yeah yeah yeah, you know, um, when I cook for them, you know, and stuff like that, and uh -huh. when when I put up the trees for them, the Christmas tree, that kind of stuff, because they're stuck in there, you know, and they don't have their families and them, so you know, to see them feel good makes me feel good, and because I'm do and I'm doing stuff for people without asking for anything in return. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's like Jesus. Jesus did all that. He, he, he healed people, never charged. He fed people, mm -hmm. never asked for anything, you know? Yeah. And uh, so that's what we got to do for one another. So staying clean and sober, it, 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 it's, uh, it's good for us to begin with, you know? Yeah. But it also... Um, allow us to give back to people, you know, what was given to us. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think, you know, I, I didn't grow up, uh, I mean, I was around a lot of religious stuff and I, I really had a hard time connecting to it. And even as an adult, it's not something that, you know, but like the, that I connect with a specific right. religion, I, I never have. But I think all of them, Right. Talk about the same things, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. I think that that's yeah. like this is the core of I think what well, we're here to do. That's, we, find a way to give back. I think we we here we here to help one another. Okay. Yeah. To love one another, and and that's that's what I get. I'm I'm a spiritual person. I'm not religious, and I believe in God and Jesus. And without them and rec and a program of recovery, I would not be here. Mm. You know. And in that note. I want to thank Sean for yeah, coming, thanks for, for, coming for being with us. Yeah, thank you today. very much. Thanks for having me. And uh, remember, folks, God loves us all. Peace.